Hey, what's up everybody? Roger the Sleep Doctor here, talking about an update with Art Van Furniture in the bankruptcy. You know, something is not adding up here. Typically, when a company buys another company and they do a liquidation like that, they'll bring in a main liquidator, turn the business over to them, and they operate it for a period of 90 days. Why 90 days? Because that's the maximum allowed by law. But in this case today, I heard that some markets may only go 30 days, some 60 days. That's crazy. These guys are all about money. That's what I mean. Something is not adding up here. 90 days is the maximum. I've never seen a liquidation not run for 90 days because there's so much money in it. Keep in mind throughout the years, Art Van was always trying to figure out what the best title of a sale was to be able to draw customers in the store. Notice right now with all the current advertising for the GOB, customers are flooding in the stores. I heard the Saginaw store in Michigan had a line of cars out in the street a quarter mile long just to get in the parking lot. So there's a tremendous opportunity here for the liquidation company and the private equity company to maximize their profits. Something's not adding up. How much money did Thomas H. Lee Partners make on the Art Van deal? Well, I have an idea. Number one and most importantly was the number of $550 million that Thomas H. Lee Partners paid Art Van for the company. But it's the other things in the deal that I think that made it so lucrative. Many of you know that Art Van was given an offer by Warren Buffett many years ago to buy the company for about $500 million and Art turned him down. I mean, Art was making a lot of money. He still had fire for the business and a passion and people that were committed, so he wasn't ready to sell. I understand that. Fast forward about 20 years later, Art gets sick and then he really has to sell the company because I think they were really struggling to try to maintain the profits that they had always made. Made. I think that Thomas H. Lee Partners, when they looked at Art Van's book, saw a gold mine. Art was truly old school. I mean, these big money guys would never tie up their money in real estate. Commercial property is a very slowly appreciating asset. So the first thing they saw in the books was that Art owned everything. He owned the property, he owned the buildings. In fact, most of the inventory that they had, they owned. See, these manufacturers, when you order merchandise, if you pay for it right away, there's an additional discount which means you make more profits. But that's not the way a private equity company thinks. They wanna pay on terms and give 30 days or 60 days after they receive the merchandise in order to pay the bill. That way they can use that money to invest in other things. So not only did the private equity see the money that they could get out of the property and the building, basically sell it off and then they become a leaseholder and they just pay the landlord over time. But they could also, instead of pay for that merchandise right up front and get a discount, put the vendors off 30 days, 60 days, 90 days and have all that cash to play with. So follow me here. From what I understand, the private equity company got about 210 to $220 million for the property and the buildings and then they became a renter, so they just had to pay every month. It is possible at Art Van size and with the current economic conditions and they were struggling, that the private equity company pushed these vendors off 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. See, it works like this. If you have $100 million in inventory and you pay for it right away with cash, that's $100 million in cash that you don't have. But if you can delay that for 30 days, then that gives you $100 million in cash to play with before you have to pay it. If you can put it off to 60 days, then that's $200 million that a free cash flow that you have to play with. If you can put them off for 90 days, that's $300 million in cash that you have to play with to invest in other things. You get the idea. It's all about cash flow and that's what private equities are masters of. Now, if you're a small retailer, if you go past the 30 days, eh, they just don't ship you. That's no problem. But Art Van, you gotta be kidding me. The vaunted Art Van, there's no risk there, right? So I believe they gave them 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and maybe even longer. So that private equity company had all of this cash rolled up. And guess what? When you file for bankruptcy, you get bankruptcy protection so you don't have to pay all those bills. And the private equity company goes, ah, and I'm telling you, that's the way it works. Okay, follow this. $550 million purchase price minus over $200 million in the price that they got back for the property and the buildings. And then that padded with the extended terms for the vendors that put over $600 million in the coffers. 
Guess what? Thomas H. Lee Partners was probably sitting on over $800 million. That means, minus their $550 million investment, Thomas H. Lee Partners probably made $250 million within two years. That's how smart these guys are. The problem is, is it's brutal and ruthless to the people. Saying all that, I think there's a silver lining in this whole thing. Who got the $550 billion? I'm just gonna be bold enough to say the Art Van family. The Art Van name is a very valuable name, especially in the state of Michigan since 1959, really? I honestly believe that one of the Art Van family members are sitting back and waiting for the proper time to make a move. And it's possible he's waiting for the right time to come in and be the savior of this whole thing. What do I mean by that? In a chapter seven bankruptcy process, the court is really in control. And there's certain timing factors within the process that they allow people to come in and purchase the remaining assets. At this point, Thomas H. Lee Partners is out of it. 